Good evening, my name is Dante, and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I discuss some of my favorite topics, such as dark and heavy music, horror films, true crime, and various creepy media I find on the internet. I'm excited to let you all know that in a month I'll be moving to a new apartment where I'll have a room set up specifically for making these videos and recording music, so my hope is that you'll be seeing a lot more of me soon. Tonight I'll be delving into an incredibly bizarre band who have become infamous for their various hoaxes on the internet. That band is Velvet Cocoon, a black metal project from Portland, Oregon. It's no secret that the musical niche of black metal has had more than its fair share of controversial artists. However, what makes Velvet Cocoon a band of interest in particular is the fact that so much of their backstory was made up, seemingly just for the sake of shits and giggles. From band members in entire albums that never existed, to plagiarism and various other falsehoods, the band amassed a bit of a lore to themselves around internet forms within the black metal community. To really emphasize how much of a deep dive there is to do on Velvet Cocoon, fans of the band created an archive dedicated to them with its own lengthy section detailing its various hoaxes and rumors. Much of the information I'll be providing in this video comes directly from those archives as well as the archive of the band's original website which is now inactive. Before we start, I want to make a disclaimer that a lot of the details behind the band are still pretty ambiguous, and some parts of the timeline are still pretty muddy. So I'm going to do my best to keep things straightforward, but I can't confirm that all of the dates and information available to me are 100% accurate. Anyhow, let's delve into the bizarre and mysterious world of Velvet Cocoon. First things first, what we know for a fact is that Velvet Cocoon are based in Portland, Oregon, and the primary artist behind the project is Joshua A. Lobb, who goes by the stage name SGL. The word cocoon referenced in their name is apparently not related to a cocoon like a chrysalis, but Cacoon was a set of initials found in a catacomb just outside of Portland where the band would write their music. So if you were planning on trying to correct me on the spelling of the word cocoon in the comments, don't. In the band's original account of their backstory, they began as a trio back in 1996, with SGL being joined by two additional members under the names LVG and SKV. They described themselves as eco with violent live shows that included self-mutilation and torture. They attained their inspiration to write from abusing DXM, or dextromethorpin, a dissociative drug found in cough suppressants such as Robitussin and Delsum. They were also self-described as asexual, stating in their own words, When you remove sex from the equation of life, you are left with endless possibilities, a sense of liberated freedom which few could ever comprehend. Which, if they actually are asexual, they were really ahead of their time being out with that in the early 2000s. Anyway, they stated in an early interview that they went from three members to two. Their original drummer, known as SKV, supposedly fell to his death while drunk in the Cascade Mountain Range, but his bandmates didn't feel a need to mourn him because he hated life. So this reduced the lineup to two sole members, SGL and LVG, who we will later know as Angela. The band stated that several demos were recorded and released throughout the late 90s to early 2000s, but the first verifiable release came in the form of an album called Dextronaut in 2002. Though the band would state the album was recorded in 1998, most of my sources stated that the project didn't actually become active until 2001, to which the album would be recorded and begin to surface online the following year. The album was an incredibly lo-fi, amateurish, and raw-sounding take on second-wave black metal. The titles of the songs in the original tracklist are a clear parody on the grim and satanic themes on black metal, though these titles were eventually changed when the album would be re-released in 2006. Likewise, the pictures of the band members featured in the album's original booklet were of Varg Vikernes and Per Ingva Olin, who, if you aren't familiar, are two notorious musicians in black metal who were both associated with the band Mayhem. The members are credited as Sir Grimalot for SGL and Lord Very Grim for LVG, and the label listed as having released the album is Grim Productions. Clearly those aspects were meant to poke fun at black metal, though the following album would see the band taking things a bit more seriously. A second album titled Genevieve would be released in 2004 on the label Full Moon Productions. This sophomore release would see the band taking on a more harrowing and atmospheric approach, 
with hazier sounding guitars, more subtle sounding whispery vocals, and a generally more chilling, unsettling mood. The band stated that to create the hypnotic effect of the riffs, they created a diesel-powered guitar that they amplified and recorded underwater in various aquariums. They called this style of guitar playing Diesel Harp. The following year, in 2005, the band would release a compilation titled Norse Suite, featuring two of the band's demos from the years prior, respectively titled Music for Falling Buildings and Chapel Flames Red Steeples. Now that I've talked a bit about some of the band's releases, I'm going to switch gears and talk a little more in depth about the supposed members of the band. Hold on tight because this part may get a little messy. So as I said earlier, Velvet Cocoon stated in an early interview that they went from three members down to two due to the death of their original drummer. This left us with Josh, or SGL, as well as Angela, or LVG, as the band's two sole members. Both artists carried out multi-instrumental roles, handling vocals, guitars, synth, and whatever programming went into creating the drums. Both members of the band did a handful of interviews in the early 2000s around the time of Genevieve's release. They would discuss the songwriting process, how their music was inspired by drug use, how they were celibate, and their ties to an eco terrorist group known as the Earth Liberation Front, or ELF. Furthermore, several new members ended up being introduced to the lineup over time. From what I could find at some point in 2005, a handful of new members were supposedly brought into the fold, such as Alexis on cello, Tessa on bass, Veronica as another guitarist, etc. Well, this would ultimately lead to a bizarre statement from the band stating that Victoria, Josh, and Alexis all left the band, leaving Angela and a few of the other newer members to pick up the pieces and continue on without them. However, None of these people existed. None of them. None of the members existed, including Angela. From what I've been able to find, and I say this entirely based on just research alone, but my understanding is that the only official member that was ever involved in Velvet Cocoon was Joshua A. Lobb, or SGL. Supposedly, the second member, Angela, was entirely made up, and various models were photographed to create the illusion that there was a second member of the band who actually didn't exist. In addition to that, all of the other members who were supposedly introduced into the lineup never existed either. Yet bizarrely enough, there were posts on the band's website signed by Alexis up until 2007, which, again, there was no actual member named Alexis in the band. Somewhere down the line, Josh came clean that everything from the Diesel Harp, the fake band members, the limited release demos, and the eco were all just elaborate jokes to make fun of the black metal scene. What was much worse, though, is that he revealed that some of the band's release material was stolen from other artists. One such example of the band's plagiarism came in the form of a lo-fi folk album the band released titled How the Last Day Came and Stayed, Then Faded into Simulated Rain. Josh himself eventually admitted that the entire album was just a slightly altered version of an album called Shipwrecks and Russian Roulette by a singer-songwriter known as Miranda Lehman, aka Korova. Velvet Cocoon's supposed first demo titled December and Dissolve was actually the demo of another band named Ahulabrum. A dream pop album the band released titled Dizzy from Eternity was actually a demo titled Clicks and Hisses by a band called My Violent Ego. These are just some of the ones that we know exactly what music was stolen from other artists. That doesn't even include the multitude of demos and other supposed releases that just never existed in the first place. Likewise, Josh admitted the band's first album, Dextronaut, was literally just a joke to him that was sloppily thrown together. The 2005 compilation, Nor Suite, was apparently recorded in just three hours and sold to a fake label. At that point, Josh confirmed that the only serious and legitimate release of the band was their second album, Genevieve. With much of the band's falsehoods now out in the open and revealed for their fanbase, Josh made the announcement that he would be releasing one final album under Velvet Cocoon. In 2009, Josh would actually release two final albums for the band, a black metal album titled Paul Opal Poor PR33, or however the hell you say it, and a dark ambient album titled Atropine. Pa Opal Poor PR33 took several years to make before its release, with Josh even abandoning the album entirely at one point. This would be the only album we know of that actually featured another member in the lineup, as session vocals were provided by James Harmon, aka Kane. Musically, the album takes on a slower and more depressive approach to the icy and atmospheric sounds of Genevieve, focusing on more monotonous and droney riffs alongside spacious drumming. 
Atropine would be another plagiarized release. The entire album takes songs from various other artists, such as a dark wave band known as Faith and Disease and Anya Garbarek's music for the film Angel A, then slows them way down under heavy reverb to create sparse, droning ambient pieces. It would later be revealed that Atropine was only released for the sake of fulfilling Velvet Cocoon's contract with their label, Full Moon Productions. With this, Josh laid Velvet Cocoon to rest that same year, only to move on to a new project known as Claire Cassis. Claire Cassis took on a similar musical direction as Velvet Cocoon, though a bit more melodic and cleaned up in comparison to its grittier predecessor. Josh is credited in their work alongside LVG or Angela, the previously debunked secondary member of Velvet Cocoon, as well as drummer Daniel Marvin, who may also just be another one of Josh's fabricated members. It very well could be that the music of Claire Cassis was also entirely done by Josh himself. Claire Cassis would release a full-length album and two EPs in 2010 and the following year, though nothing new has come from the band since then. In the past 10 years, it appears that Josh has shifted his focus from music to perfume as he would become the owner of a perfume line known as Slumber House. Kind of an unexpected change in career goals, but go off Josh, sounds like a nice classy gig. As of 2020, Velvet Cocoon are supposedly active again, though I have yet to see that any new material, whether original or fake, has been announced or released. At this point, it's hard for me to really say what Josh will have up his sleeve for this project and what we could really expect from him. Perhaps if Velvet Cocoon do release more material, it might be some eerie sounding black metal, it might be someone else's work, or it might just not exist at all. In conclusion though, I feel as though there is so much more to the story behind this project that I can only really scrape the surface on. Especially since there are various theories and rumors of Josh having involvement in other bands, projects, and releases, many of which apparently were also fabricated. However, even just retelling some of the primary bulk of Velvet Cocoon's lore, I feel like Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia and that conspiracy meme. At the end of all this, I'm mostly just left wondering why. Was everything about Velvet Cocoon just meant to poke fun and rile up the black metal community? Was Josh getting something more out of this project, and did he legitimately enjoy making this type of music? Did he mean for it to go on as long as he did? The answers to those questions and the definitive truths behind the band I'm not sure we'll ever truly know. Anyway, that wraps up the tale of Velvet Cocoon for now. If you want to read more about the band, I've linked the archives that I've referenced in the description along with the songs that I've featured. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm also active on Instagram, TikTok, and Reddit, so if you want to support my content or just hit me up to chat about music, you can reach me there as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening.